Hi, this is Dr. Paul, and today what we're going to talk about is the corneal reflex. Now, the goal of this reflex is to protect both eyes by reflexively closing both when only one is touched. So let's run through the steps and go over the important anatomy and just discuss the general direction in which this moves. So the first step is that one of the eyes is touched. So we touch the cornea, and for example, this is a finger. So if someone touches the eye, what happens is initially we have a sensory branch of the cranial nerve 5 that is going to be sent to the spinal nucleus of cranial nerve 5. And the branch that we're going to initially send this signal down is the nasociliary branch of the ophthalmic branch of cranial nerve 5, which is your trigeminal nerve. Now, in making this move from the eye to the spinal nucleus, we're going to pass through the semilunar ganglion. Okay, now once we get to the spinal nucleus, okay, we have an efferent signal that goes from the cranial nerve 5 nucleus all the way to the facial motor nucleus, which is of cranial nerve 7. Now, this efferent signal passes through interneurons of the spinal nucleus. Then for our facial nucleus, okay, our facial motor nucleus, a signal is sent up through the facial nerve, specifically through the temporal branch of the facial nerve or cranial nerve 7. And this is going to a muscle in both eyes known as the orbicularis oculi. Once stimulated to contract, that's going to cause bilateral blinking of the eyes. And that's why we get this reflex so that it closes the eyes and uh, protects them from whatever noxious stimulus was initially touching the cornea. And that's all there really is to the corneal reflex. So now you have a very strong understanding of exactly how this reflex works.